never can win when you're dirty, honey. You never can win. You what the f did I do to you for you to do that? Nothing. Nothing. Listen, you never win when you play dirty. Whatever lays in the dark will always make its way to light. What has taken place in a rap game has been pretty interesting. Nicki has opened a door for a lot of female rappers to actually come through and get a taste of the rap industry. She has been the inspiration, whether someone to admit it or not, for these women's plight into music. She has undoubtedly set the bar so high for the standard of female rap that it actually can't be touched nor duplicated. She is the pink print, but unfortunately that did not come without problems. The thing with Nicki, aside from the music industry that differentiates her, is her contract. She legit signed one of the best contracts in the industry because she was smart and she knew her worth from the jump. During the start of Nicki's career, she joined the Full Forces group Hoodstars, but soon departed ways to go solo. She had a lot of buzz to her name and was noticed on MySpace by Big Fendi, who was the CEO of the Brooklyn label Dirty Money Entertainment. He signed her to his label on an 180 day contract. Dirty Money had a series called the Come Up DVDs in which Nicki was featured in, leading her to be noticed by Lil Wayne. By that time, Nicki was releasing mixtapes and collabing with the likes of Gucci Man and Lil Wayne. Nicki had serious buzz to her name, and by that time her contract was over with Big Fendi, labels were fishing to sign Nicki Minaj. But she decided it was too early in her career to sign a deal. She thought she needed to cultivate a fan base before she signed another contract which was a smart ass decision. By the time Nicki released Be Me Up Scotty, her critically acclaimed mixtape, it was a done deal. It spawned some of her most popular soundtracks that are still popular till this day. I Get Crazy and most notably Itty Bitty Piggy. She already established a genuine fan base to her name. Nicki was a new girl on the block. She was getting co-signed left and right and she had the look. Nicki is undeniably gorgeous. So she was an easy sell. Her biggest deals on the table were from Warner Brothers and Young Money. So she negotiated her worth and that is what helped her get to the position she is in today. One thing about Miss Nikki was that she never once complained about not being able to release an album or her label not paying her or having to split her money 40 different ways. Nikki signed a deal in which allowed her to keep her name, her publishing, her touring, basically everything everything you own your own publishing is that true that's absolutely true and I want to thank Lil Wayne for giving me that opportunity because even though I might have a buzz and all that let's not forget who Wayne is right and there's a million people that would have loved to be in my shoes and he he's he believes in me that much that he did give me everything I, I was asking for and yeah I think it's a new it's a new it's a new time it's a new day but I I really wanted to own all my stuff my merchandise and my publishing my my touring and I got it unbelievable and she walks aimlessly and doesn't beat to anyone's drum because she doesn't have to compared to the majority of artists out now. She is the only female rapper to not have a 360 deal and she is the richest female rapper ever. Nicki has had a great run from 2008 to 2016, but in the end, that's where things started to get rocky. Around that time also, Nicki was the only female rapper accumulating a surplus amount of money. So you have all these record execs watching Nicki grow more successful in every avenue, but they're not getting a piece of the pie. These CEOs saw the potential and money that was in the female rap game with Iggy Azalea. Whether people want to admit it or not, at one point Iggy Azalea was the biggest up and coming female rapper at the time of 2013-2014, spawning numerous of hits top 10 of the official singles chart on five occasions and multiple memorable songs like Fancy and Problem. She had a nice little run, but it didn't last long. But that was the start of another female rapper even coming close to the level of success as Nicki. Nicki being the only female rapper for years, once Iggy came up, there was immediate comparisons or competitions between them generated in the media. As they like to do with females, as if the two women couldn't just coexist in the rap world. But that could have been the reason record execs thought it would be a good tactic in order to create the next new female rapper. These labels sought to tarnish Nicki and her reputation. One thing about Miss Onika, she is a very strong woman. Being the only female in a predominantly male dominated industry had to harden her exterior, but she still remained feminine and composed. 
Nikki is not one to bow down to anybody nor kiss ass to appease because she is self-made in all that she has done. She has taken all the right turns in order to be in the position she is in today. The unfortunate thing about being a female is people in power see someone like Nikki and her aura and either get intimidated or upset because she won't bend to their whim. As will happen with the Grammys, Nikki was not going to take the fault for her Grammy performance because they approved of it. The head of the Grammys wanted her to take the heat from the backlash and she opposed. If you need a further backstory, I made a whole video about it so go check it out, but that's one of the examples that we know about. I'm pretty sure though that ain't the only man Nikki stood up to. So when trying to take someone down, what do you do? Step 1. You defame their character. If I'm being real, I don't really recall how everything started even based on research. It was like one day everyone just hated Nikki, or Nikki didn't show love or Nikki doesn't collab with female rappers, or Nikki has an attitude. It was just bad press all around. For example, the Britney Spears situation back in 2007. They harassed and painted Britney to be a crazy pop star. Michael Jackson, they painted him out to be a weirdo and a child abuser. By the way, a video on Michael Jackson's longevity will be released in the near future. That's just a few examples of the media going out their way to sway the public's opinions. So what makes Nikki any different? Because Nicki dominated for so long, she really had so much influence on the rap genre. Getting rid of her wouldn't be so easy and the execs knew that. They were pulling strings left and right to make sure Nicki really looks like the bad guy. And y'all don't come for me, but Nicki in trying to defend herself did also play into this bad guy character. And what played into it was cause nobody came out in defense of Nicki either. Indie friends, hip hop moguls, even Lil Wayne, nobody defended her. It seemed like a constant fight between Nikki and her fans versus everybody else, and Nikki's fans really ride for her. It's like the beehive. You can't talk bad about Beyonce. No, no. But Beyonce doesn't even talk to us, so her fandom is the biggest, but she doesn't fuel the fire. The closest we got to see her fandom do something wild is like the beehive flooding comments or her fans throwing Beyonce CDs at Carrie Hilson. But the barbs are legit crazy as fuck because Nikki actually talks and interacts with her fans, so her fans feel like they have a deeper connection with her. Nikki wasn't doing bad for real, she just had a lot of bad press. Nikki was still doing features and dropping bars, and this is why I tell y'all, your fan base matters. I'll be breaking down Sheether in a minute, but between the time of 2017 when the hate train started to Nikki's career now, she never exactly fell off. Not every song might have been as likable, but she was still in the charts. Rake It Up In Motorsport, 2017. Barbie Tings, Chun-Li, Fifi, 2018. Hot Girl Summer and Tusa, 2019. Say So, With The Speed Bout, 2020. Sing Green, Whole Lot Of Money, Itty Biggy Piggy, A Song From A Decade Ago, 2021. Do We Have A Problem, and her most recent number one super freaky girl. She has charted before, in the middle, and after her hate train ended. Where exactly did she fall off? And don't ever forget, they also blackballed her. Most people don't know, but Nicki was one of the prominent voices to fight for streaming, being a part of album sales for Billboard. In 2016, the RIAA now declares one album sale equals 10 song downloads or 1500 song streams. Before, if a musician went platinum, that certification was based purely on sales, both physical and digital. It didn't matter how many times a record was listened to on Spotify or Apple Music. So Nicki single-handedly made it easier for artists to go platinum for streams in the age where nobody really buys albums like they used to. This also made it easier for artists to profit off of their music and for independent artists to actually find a level of success without a label push. Y'all, Nikki pissed them labels off, okay? Whoever was a top exec were not messing with it. Nikki has too much power, courage, and money to do what she feels like doing. And this was in 2015 when she was fighting this. 2016 approval, then 2017 hate train. So y'all do the math. Not only that, but because Nikki is such an outspoken person, whether she's right or wrong, she has upset some people. DJs have admitted to not playing Nikki's records on purpose. DJ Envy admitted this on air, so if you think one of the DJs on the top morning show is going out their way to do that, what does that say? 
And she has spoken out about being blackballed from radio. We N words that's gonna come up there now. That's that's yeah, that's the problem. That. So, so all the are all the that's the problem. That. Are all the DJs gonna form like Voltron and stop playing our records? I don't want y'all to absolutely. Be I'm gonna have a conversation with Self first. I'm gonna have a conversation with Self. They being honest on the microphone. But Evan, you from Queens? I don't care. Nikki, I got mad love for you. I want to tell you something. Really? I'm telling you in front of the world. DJ Envy is the only DJ blackballing you. Wait, okay. play the beginning of that again because I feel like she said something. Envy. It sounded like she shouted him out as a black. Oh, I might drop a freestyle Envy. Um, envy, see? She, she said every week. I might drop a freestyle Envy. Nikki, every, Nikki, I'm not even joking with you. Envy, say what you said off the air. I said I yeah. thought I was the only one that didn't play her record. That's I right. I mean, I think every other DJ's play a record, but that's envy, a shame. Y'all both from Queens. That is whack. They, envy. they squashed out their beef. It was, no, it wasn't whack. She went at something. She went at. But honestly, who cares? Like, this isn't a Janet Jackson situation. Nikki has a strong internet fan base. Like, who the fuck is turning on the radio? Pass me the R. In order to bring down Nikki, execs felt like they had to pin someone against her. Stir a catfight to test Nikki and see how it would play out. Lady LeSure is a British rapper. Atlantic execs wanted her to do a diss against Nikki for 250K. Is it actually true that you got offered 250K <laughs> to write a diss track for Nikki and you turned it down? What? Yeah, it is, yeah. What? Ooh. Are you only hearing about this now? I remember what? hearing about it at the time, but I've never had a chance actually to actually speak to you about it. Oh yeah, no, literally, yeah. Genuinely, that's what happened. Uh, and that just came from me doing a cover of Look At Me Now, you know, Buster Rhymes. Mm. It went on World Star, and then like Atlantic Records wow. was trying to reach out. Fast forward, I'm sitting down in front of this guy with my manager at the time, and um, he's just like, yeah, we, we basically want you to do a diss track to Nicki Minaj. This is after I've played him my whole like EP or whatever I've got coming out. And it's like he just didn't really care about it. and. Um, I just knew something wasn't right, and um, I went away. I'm not gonna lie. I went back on the flight home. I was bawling because I'm thinking, yo, this might be my only opportunity to get my mom a house. But um, yeah, I'm glad I didn't. Because fast forward, then Nikki, Nikki invited me to her exactly. tour, and so you always have to go. You've got instinct, yeah. man, and, and you integrity. You still got moms in your houses. And Cupcake the rapper was approached also. They were seeking females to attack Nikki, and they finally found someone willing to do it. Remy Ma in February of 2017 released Sheether and it had social media in shambles. It was a brutal 7 minute diss track against Nicki, straight shots fired, but this was the first rap beat between females since Lil Kim and Nicki almost 10 years prior, so there was a lot of pressure on Nicki to come out and respond. And when she finally did, it was weak. The diss tracks that Nicki released, I feel like she tried to take the Mariah or Drake route. Saying she doesn't make diss records, only hit records, wasn't necessary. Nicki should have responded in Roman's revenge manner, and she didn't, and it took a hit at her credibility. Remy, who is the girl's girl that she likes to portray herself to be, out of the blue releases this diss. The only issue is the timing of the diss was questionable. Remy in her interviews gets asked about Nicki quite frequently, and time and time again she never expressed she had an issue with Nicki, only love. Nicki even asked Remy to do a song with her and Foxy, but she declined. Um, when I was working on the pink print, I wanted to do a song with Remy and Foxy, and I still have the song till this day. Mm. Uh, um, it was a dip, it was on a Diplo beat, but it was mm. you know, super hood, like and hard, but like dope. But anyway, um, but that. Uh, that didn't, didn't pan out. Yeah, um, and, and you know, and I and I and I and I loved. It. So she extended a handout to you for the pink print, but you didn't accept her offer. One of the main issues of this switcheroo was on the Breakfast Club interview. Remy even said it herself. The week before she released Sheether, she didn't have a problem with Nicki. Then releases a track. But everybody brushes over the fact. You made us look stupid that day too, by the way. Really? Yeah, because I was actually uh, texting back and forth with Nikki that morning, and, and she was asking me. She was saying that we were gassing up a problem between y'all two, and I was like, "No, I, said, I don't even think Rim got an issue with you." I promise you. <laughs> I said that, that day. Morning, he hit me. Was and like, then, yeah, <laughs> and then an hour later, an hour later, and I hit him like, "My bad, I didn't know." <laughs> I so didn't know. we're just gonna ignore the the week before that when I came up here and I distinctively told y'all and everybody else like, "Nah, bro, like everything's cool." Like, that's why. That's why I was telling her. Yeah, but then I don't give a. F Can we talk about something? I understand that Nikki throws shots in her verses, but she's always done that, even when she was the only one reigning on top. In the 2017 featured songs, Make Love and Swalla, she's suspected to be throwing subs. In Swalla, she said, I gave these bitches two years, now your time's up. Bless her heart, she throwing shots, but every line sucks. In Make Love, she said, All the way up? Oh, oh, you bitch the queen. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna butcher this. Um, I'm just gonna say it regularly. 
all the way up Ooh, you the queen the queen over here one platinum plaque album flop bitch wear but nobody wants to talk about the numerous of shots that remy was throwing at nikki before she even decided to throw any shots in the BT cipher in 2016, Remy said she's the queen of New York and uses the phrase I'm a muff monster in the same tone that Nicki used it in her iconic verse. Same year in the song Money Showers, Remy rapped, bitch claiming that she the queen of what? Not Harley. Who the fuck gave you your crown, bitch? Steve Harvey? Again, same year, Remy did a Hot 97 freestyle and rapped in regards to Nikki's Bitches as my son's iconic one-liner, saying, all this talk about my son and your son, I'm hot and your whole world revolves around me, B, I am the son. So when Nikki finally takes shots in 2017, then all of a sudden she started it. Like, come on, you have to be fair. Like, nobody wanted to point out that Remy was taking shots before everything really started. So when Remy goes on Wendy Williams, everybody believes what was told. To Mariah, to Taylor, to Hannah, like, and no one says anything. What is it that she does? Well, it wasn't necessarily, it wasn't necessarily, you know, the, the little subliminal stuff on records because I didn't care. I don't care about records. And, you know, I'd spoken to her before, like, whatever you say, you're supposed to say you're the best and none of y'all better than me, whatever. It was the behind the scenes things that you people would never know about, you know, as far as trying to keep me off of red carpets and trying to make sure awards don't go to me or she's not going to be in attendance or trying to get people to make bad reports about my album sales or just anything that I'm doing to make me look less and make her look better. And I have a problem. When you're trying to stop my bag, when you're trying to stop me from taking care of my children, now I have a problem with that. Go. <laughs> okay, so where are the receipts? Nikki is already perceived as a bitch because she is very vocal and stands strong. But who the fuck is Nikki though to be stopping anyone's bag? I mean, with all due respect, you broke her BT best female rap streak and Nikki can't even get a Grammy. And I say that with the utmost respect. Remy was throwing stuff out here, but the stuff she proclaimed would have been done to Iggy first. Mm. But y'all put the pieces together. Labels already offered two female rappers money and opportunity to diss Nicki. Then all of a sudden, Remy disses Nicki. You don't have to like Nicki, but don't ignore the candle that's already lit in your face. The hate for Nicki in 2017 was way too strong, and it was the perfect opportunity for Atlantic to debut their new artist, Cardi B. She already had a very likable personality and the hunger to prove everybody who doubted her wrong. She was the perfect artist to propel into the limelight. Borak Yellow was everywhere. Constant radio play, backed up by all the celebrities, you couldn't get away from that song. Her popularity, especially from being on Love & Hip Hop, because she was a fan favorite, was undeniable. Her support and star power grew by the minutes. Cardi was the new girl. And after the Remy feud, Nicki took time to herself, so it really was the cracks in the window that created this. Cardi was receiving great publicity and support from all the past female rappers like Remy and Kim, giving her the stamp of approval for the culture. And the fans, in the midst of watching Nicki's downfall, were eager to hear something new. In 2018, Cardi released her debut album, Invasion of Privacy. The album was well received and spawned some hits, like I Like It featuring Bad Bunny, Be Careful, and Ring. All the positive reception made Cardi the new superstar in a short period of time. She even won a Grammy for the best rap album for the 61st Grammys in 2019. She won against Nipsey Hussle, Pusha T, and Travis Scott. The Grammys are known for not giving the right artist awards. Everyone knows that if you win a Grammy, the price for you as an artist goes up, which is why the Grammys wouldn't put up Nicki against Lotto for Best Rap Song. Cardi won Best Rap Album when Travis Scott really had the biggest album of the year. And I'm not even the biggest Travis fan, but I can even admit that his Astro World album took over the year. No Bystanders, Butterfly Effect, and especially Sickle Mode were hugely popular. Cardi has remained successful and has generated an immense amount of hits even in the midst of Nicki and her beef. She's stayed on the charts, which is why I'm sure it left a bad taste in Nicki's mouth. Let's be honest, half the stuff that Cardi does Nicki would not be able to get away with if she tried. Nicki has worked hard and upheld an image and standard. So to see people still continue to rally behind Cardi, despite all that Nicki has contributed in the industry, felt disrespectful. Cardi gets away with a lot of stuff. And even in the midst of all of that, fast forward till now, she no longer has the drive to continue music, as she stated herself. 
I'm not even gonna front like around 2018, 2017, 2016, 2015. I used to love to make music, but now making music to me has become like a a a, a job that gets me anxiety because everybody just critique everything that I do. That it's just like. You know, sometimes you just don't want to do something that makes you feel, that gives you that much anxiety. So I just be like, oh, freezing myself. But I have to let that go. I have to release more music. I have to release more music and I have to just go out there. The simple life is so good. You know what I'm saying? Like, the simple life is so good. Like, um, waking up, playing with my son, getting ready, take, picking up my daughter from school, taking her to gymnastics class. Like, I just, I just love it. Like, I, I, I love it. That's where my hate campaign started. And I'll be really surprised. Cardi fulfilled her goal of being rich. And now that she has that four years later, she already feels accomplished. That's why she said she's gotten too comfortable. She got the label push. The label got her the Grammy. She has the number one hits, walks the red carpets. In such a fast pace, she grew so fast, she didn't stop to smell the roses. So now, she, since she's giving birth to two beautiful kids, she wants to pursue other ventures. But it's really not that simple. Cardi signed a contract and since her most recent single Hot Shit didn't perform so well with a big budget and features, the label has to make their money back. Even with her second album, there is a lot of pressure on her to perform well. Who y'all think pays for this stuff? Now we all know that Azalea Banks is problematic but she does state facts sometimes and she explained everything perfectly in regards to this situation. Last year you had a thing, or is it an issue against Cardi B? My theory is that Nicki Minaj for a very long time has had like complete market share of the female rap. And for a very long time, these other music industry execs have been trying to push their female rap products through. You know, you saw Iggy Azalea and you saw like all these other girls and Nicki Minaj was just not letting these other corporate white guys get a piece of her fucking pie. So they made Cardi B and launched her. It's not a theory, it's a truth. They made her and launched her on Nicki. And that's just because of this greater like greater white male like corporate part to the fucking music industry that's just not gonna let they're just not gonna let a black girl have any sort of like power you know Nikki had too much like like the power the female rap power was too centralized in one spot they had to launch something on her to break that shit up you know what I'm saying yo that's what we can all admit that Nikki does have a lot of power in the female rap game she has had so many hiccups in her career but honestly who hasn't we the fans, the people, actually watched this woman grow in the age of social media. Remember, Nikki got discovered through MySpace damn near 15 years ago, utilized social media, grew her fan base before she actually decided herself that she wanted to get signed to a label. Not many artists believe in themselves to take that leap of faith like she did. So trying to dethrone her the way that they did wasn't meant to last because she's an organic artist. Old generation to new generation, she has a very solid fan base. You can't get rid of something like that because she set the bar so high with her verses and her animated personality. Yes, she's a veteran, but because of her rap style, she will always sound new. Regardless of the diss, because she spent so many years going toe to toe with hip hop veterans like Kanye and Jay Z, and she was always a standout verse, she proved countless of times her authenticity and ability to hold her own. What we witnessed in her hate train and picking sides in an attempt to eradicate her career, a lot of artists now are backtracking. Even Remy herself came out and said she regrets she there years later. It just, it just bothers me that this record that I put out where it's literally picking apart a female went so viral and every you know media outlet wants to talk about it and pick it up. I feel like we could have did that same thing working together. Mm. Like I, I would have liked it so much better that way. You know what I'm saying? Like Why it doesn't. Didn't you? It wasn't me. Girl, bye. What's done in the dark will make its way into the light. Because in the midst of Nicki taking a hiatus, Cardi's come up did allow a lot of rappers to come through, but at what expense? Trash artists will always be around male or female, but what we see now is some artists getting a greater push because of desirability. So now because, like I said, Nicki has set the standards so high, nobody is sticking in the terms of female rap and the ones that have immense potential have to work twice as hard. There seems to be a gray area. It's there, but it doesn't seem to be fulfilling. Because what we have now is people like Doja, who is a great artist, but because she's been working so hard, she's burned out. Then we have Meg, who had to take a hiatus because of her treatment from the Tory trial. Then we have the City Girls, who don't seem to really be prioritizing music. 
Then we have Cardi who is scared to drop her album. Where is the stability? So because of that, there is a newfound appreciation that has centered around Nicki Minaj. We love Nicki because we now see in terms of rap, the consistency, the flow, the ego, the lyricism that she has been delivering to us for the past 15 years and now, and nobody is touching that. Nicki Minaj is the staple of longevity in the music industry when it comes to public and industry scrutiny. Label giants literally tried to end her career, but in the end she has now prevailed because you never win when you play dirty. She now has her own record label and has signed some unique artists that will be making more noise soon. She is continuing to excel, being the legendary hip hop artist she is now. Well guys, that concludes today's video. Let me know what you guys think of this longevity in the music industry series that I created for myself. There will be more parts coming soon on different artists, so leave recommendations down in the comments. Make sure you like and subscribe guys. Toodles!